This video is a brief overview of installing the Millennium CNG conversion kit on a fuel injected engine. This picture shows our Millennium CNG conversion kit. On the left back corner is a bag containing miscellaneous parts. In front of that is the fill nozzle with the shutoff valve. In front of that is the pressure gauge and level sensor. In the front center is the adjustable aluminum mixer. Just to the right of that is the stepper motor and to the right of that is the computer cable and behind that is the other uh, wiring harness. In the very front is the CNG low pressure fuel hose. The red hoses are the coolant hoses. Uh, there's a blue CNG sticker. The regulator is a large silver with brass fittings uh, device and the tubing is the white roll of tubing that is a high carbon steel tubing with a plastic or rubber coating and the Millennium controller is the larger black control box and in front of that is the changeover switch or COS that will sense the level and switch has the indicator lights and the switch to switch fuels. This kit is universal and fits on all fuel injected engines except a few hybrids. You need to look at the engine and decide where to mount your regulator, the mixer, the fill nozzle. The fill nozzle is usually installed in the engine compartment can, but can also be located in other locations. Here's a picture of the throttle body and the hose going into it where the mixer is to be installed. You want to install it as close to the, to the throttle body as possible. Uh, most engines have a air intake system that's quite large. An aftermarket system can be installed to free up more space for the regulator and other components. So just visually check the engine area and to, to decide where to locate everything before you get started. V8 engines on trucks, etc., uh, have much more room for components. Smaller vehicles have a less room for components. Here is our kit installed on the same engine on a different vehicle with an aftermarket air intake system. This kit's been installed on this engine for about two years. The uh, system is uh, not wired completely uh, as it's used for demos and to illustrate the wiring. There's the, the cone air shape filter, the mass air flow sensor with the adapter, the coupler, an elbow, and right in front of the throttle body is the mixer. That's what you're looking at there is the mixer with that's clamped in place. There's the Millennium controller. There's the regulator with the solenoid. Here is the fill nozzle installed near the gas cap. On most engines you won't be able to install it here, but uh, when you can it makes it very nice. Most of the time it will be installed in the engine compartment or near the rear of the vehicle. In this vehicle we installed the tank in the trunk, which takes up about half the trunk. Here's the mixer installed in front of the throttle body. You can see the face of the mixer. The air goes in the face, the adjustable face, and then out the open back side. It must be installed with the air flowing in that direction. Here are the T's installed in the coolant 
lines going to the heater core. That's where you'll install them most of the time. The red hoses are arc hoses that go to the regulator. They're connected to the regulator fittings using hose clamps. Here's a picture of the pressure gauge and level sensor, the high pressure connection to the regulator, and the black hose is the out hose going to the stepper motor and then to the mixer. And again here is the stepper motor. Just clamped on. Another look at the pressure gauge and level sensor. The high pressure fitting. And the output low pressure hose going to the stepper motor and then to the mixer. We use a, a 90 degree elbow fitting here and you can see the fitting that's threaded into the mixer. There's the high pressure line. Here's the regulator and right here is your idle adjustment screw. This is the only adjustment you'll make on the regulator. There's this, this solenoid coil which is attached to the regulator which turns the CNG off and on. There's the mounting stud on the front of the regulator with the bracket which is bolted to the body of the car. Here we are checking the voltage at the TPS, the throttle position sensor. We have the negative lead to the neck ground and the positive lead to the TPS voltage. At idle it's about 0.6 to about 1 volt. On this engine it's 0.95 volts. And as you open the throttle plate the voltage will increase to about 3 to 4 volts. You can normally do this by just having someone press on the, on the throttle. Now we have the engine running and showing you the battery voltage at ignition voltage at one of the coils. You can connect to any coil for the RPM signal. You often find a 5 volt reference voltage, a ground, an ignition battery voltage, and the signal to the coil. Here's the signal to the coil. It is reading less than 1 volt because it's just a spiking voltage but it's not the same as ground. The ground will be zero volts. Here you can see the zero volts connection to the ground. Different meters will read different voltages. Some may read near battery voltage. Just depends on the meter. You can buy these meters uh, for less than ten dollars. And you must have one. Again, we're showing ground being zero volts and the RPM signal being slightly higher. Here is the aftermarket O2 sensor we installed on this engine. On most engines, you'll use the O2 sensor before the catalytic converter. Behind this O2 sensor is the air fuel ratio sensor. Here are the two yellow wires that disconnect the fuel injector circuit. So you don't have fuel injectors operating while running on CNG. On most engines you'll need to Use, use the schematic to find the common wires to the fuel injectors or trace them out at the wire harness to make sure you're disconnecting only the fuel injector wires. Here are the connections to the 
solenoid. The brown wire is connected to the ground wires. The blue wire is connected to the blue wire from the wire harness from the controller. Here's a solenoid coil. The battery, the red wire is connected to the battery through a fuse. Then of course the negative is connected to the battery terminal or to a good ground, which must be checked for to be sure it's a good ground. Here's the computer connection from the controller. This is where you'll plug the computer cable into. Here is the main menu of the software. You have those display parameters where you'll display and watch what's going on, vehicle configuration where you'll set up everything, your optional configurations, diagnosis, and file management where you can save your files and to exit. Here is the vehicle configuration page. Here you'll set the parameters for your engine. The software instructions will tell you what to set them at. Here is the display parameters page where you'll observe the operation of the engine, the stepper motor. There's the default position of the stepper motor, the actual position, the little, little white bar is the actual position of the stepper motor. There's the ranges that you can set for idle and out of idle. There's the O2 digital voltage and the, and the bar showing going rich and lean, the TPS voltage digitally and the bar. Then below that is the engine RPM. You can see the engine idling right now. You can see the RPMs increase. To the right of that at the bottom is the gas level that shows the CNG level in the tank and the temperature sensor which we don't use. Okay, You should always see the the O2 going rich and lean, rich and lean, both at idle and at running. Here you can see it running at almost 3,000 RPMs. Going back to an idle. The idle should always be set as close as possible to the default setting. Here is the optional configuration page on the actuator tab. This is where you'll set the idle and out of idle ranges and the default lock, you, you click the box and you can change the default lock value then after you've set your everything and everything's running properly then you uncheck the box so the system will automatically adjust the default position. Here is the COS or changeover switch. We're going to start the engine now. You'll see the red light come on which runs on gasoline. It flashes yellow light flashes and then turns to glow indicating you're running on natural gas. The top switches show the fuel level. You get one green light on it right now because we have a quarter tank. Now it's running on gasoline. Now it's running on natural gas. You can switch fuels at any time. We hope this video has helped. Please see our other videos and our website for more information. Thank you.